So, uh, yeah. guys, welcome to the Friday 13th YouTube channel. I hope you're all well. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Yes. So, how's, how's, the, how's the weather in uh, Sweden at the moment? Pretty all good. Right now it's, it's sunny and uh, with, with winter. It's sunny and cold, but it's uh, anyway, it's great. We, we're waiting for the spring. Yes. Right, okay. So I'd just like to say thank you for doing this interview for Friday 13th. Um, so I'm going to ask you some warm-up questions first. I mean, you guys have been around for many, many years. I mean, you started back in 1993, I believe. No, no, we started in, in early January. I formed a band together with CJ Greenmark, January 96. Right. But, I'm, but it's correct. I met CJ Greenmark for the first time in '93. That that is correct. But in that time, we were in different bands, and then he he was together with me, uh, guesting because our guitar player couldn't play a, one tour in Germany with Modest Attraction, the band I had before. So uh, CJ joined for the last two tours in Europe uh, together with us. Okay, then. So I'm going to ask you both some warm-up questions first. As a singer, Christian, who was your uh, vocal influences? Who inspired you to become a singer? Yeah, I think my biggest vocal influence is like Ronnie S. Dio, Rainbow, Brian Connolly, Sweet, Freddie Mercury, Queen, John Miles, David Byron, Uriah Heep. Um, uh, yeah, I think so, the, 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 the classic ones. And, of course, I've listened to bands like Iron Maiden and also to Michael Sweet, Striper, Joe Tempest in Europe, but uh, I think if I if you ask me of two really big vocal influences, it's Ronnie S. Dio and Brian Connolly of the Sweet. Okay, then what about you, Johan, as a bass player? Who's in inspired you to become a bass player? Uh, well, I was the first a guitarist, uh, but I have one actually bass player that I really like, and that's a Swede uh, called Eskomir Svangomir from uh, Jet Circus and Levitus from Gothenburg. He's a really great, uh, really great bass player. So I I have only one, that's him. Okay, and I don't actually know him. I'm not, I don't think I've actually heard the band. Are they, what the, oh. who, do they, who do they sound like? Well, Jet Circus, Circus is a uh, very experimental uh, hard rock. They were acting in the beginning of the 90s. If uh, I go in there, because I can tell you, he is very influenced by Gary Fane, the bass player of Uriah Heep, uh, Sven Gomez. So uh, he has this uh, Rickenbacker with his overtones yeah. in his playing. So uh, very inspired by the old, like Trevor Boulder from Uriah Heep, Gary Fane, uh, Neil Murray. So uh, I think that's his main influences from... Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, Jonathan. No, but, uh, that's great, because then I had some more implants that I didn't know about, so that's great. And he, he's got some uh, distortion to his sound, which I like. Yes. He plays almost like a guitarist. Okay, then are you inspired by anybody like Glenn Hughes? Does he inspire you? Uh, yeah, but I've never been into the Purple or his music, actually. Uh, but I think he's a great uh, bass player and singer. Absolutely. Right so what about all these, yeah. I know you guys are Christians, I mean, what Christian metal bands other than Striper inspired you? Yeah, I think uh, for, for me, uh, uh, if I'm talking for myself, uh, the bands that really inspired me, uh, Christian bands, especially in the in the mid-80s and further, was like Baron Cross, Bloodgood, Saint, Jerusalem, Leviticus, um, White Cross, so it, it those Christian bands in, in the first, like in the first Christian wave of white metal, uh, if I talk talking for me, because those those were the bands. But of course, Striper was the main was the main band for me. What about you? I can your say, hand? yeah, exactly the same. Actually, Striper was my main go-to band, and then I was into all the bands he mentioned, like Jerusalem and also Petra. Uh, yeah, so Petra, I, 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 I think <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think I've listened to almost every one of these bands actually growing up. All right, because for me, I mean, I'm, I'm an, I, for me, Christian metal is me is just music anyway. People criticize, criticize Christian bands, but there's some really good Christian bands out there. I mean, I, I like the bands like Recon and Deliverance and Tonic. Uh, yes. and, you know, all them and sort of bands. Harder. And I also yeah, like. I, also... I, was, I, was, I was listening to Recon. That was a really good band. Behind the Enemy Lines. I yeah. Think they yeah. Yeah. Great. 
It's a shame. That, it's a shame they only did one album. But I also, but I also saw um, Deliverance at Bangers Open Air in Germany a couple of years ago. They were fantastic live. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, I was also listening to a UK band. I think they've some really good albums. Stairway. You know them? No, no. I don't. I don't know them actually. A very, a very good UK band. Yeah. No, I don't know. Though. I remember a Swedish band called uh, Verney Domini, I think they were called. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. I'm, yes, They're friends you know, to us. Uh, they are really close friends. Uh, the brothers Veinicke, I've released, uh, helped them to release some of the stuff, but uh, Torbjörn and uh, and Thomas, uh, the guitarist and drummer of Verney Domini, we had a band together with my brother in Audiovision. So... Yeah, we had a band together called Audiovision. You know, I mean, there's some, yeah. like I said, there's some really cool Christian bands out there, but the only thing I don't like is this Christian black metal. How can it be black metal and be <laughs> Christian? I'm sorry, that is just bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not my style either. I mean, Christian, I mean... do you like black metal? One, one second, it's traffic here. <laughs> one second. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, now I'm I'm here again. Yes, uh, do you like any metal, black now, metal? Now I, that, uh, I, I think it's for me. It's yeah, uh, it, it feels strange. I, you know, my brother was used to be in a band called Crimson Moonlight. I like the guy, but I, but I, uh, I, for me, it's very strange to call it Christian black metal because uh, uh, the the styles. But it's it's my personal uh, view of it. Right then. But yeah. it's, Again, uh, uh, you can express your your music in different uh, your 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 message in different ways. But yeah, uh, for me, I, I've never been into the growling uh, type. I'm more I'm I'm a more old school uh, vocalist. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. just, just, just before we talk, carry on, uh, Christian. You was in a band called Divine. Is it Divine Fire? <laughs> That's right. They, they were <laughs> they, they were excellent. They were really heavy for what you were doing. It's kind of like Arch Enemy, Nevermore, but with like clean vocals. Yes, you, you know, uh, because of my brother was used in a, uh, uh, was a member in Sanctifica and uh, Crimson Mole, like really ex Christian extreme bands. I wanted to 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 do a mix, and I had my ideas. And at that time, I met Janis Stefanovic for the first time. And we did uh, those albums, and I'm very proud of these five albums we did, and uh, uh, very happy for the way it turned out. And uh, and we co have continued now as the waymaker, but we we don't have I don't have so much growling parts, but we still have that <laughs> heaviness into the music. Yeah. All right, interesting. So, Joanne, I mean, what band was you in before joining Narnia? What was your bands? Actually, I was in one of those. <laughs> bands before <laughs> and that's not my style either but it was a band called safe mode and they got uh, very much melodic parks parts as well so much you know clean singing mixed with <clears throat> so i was guitarist in that band uh, and they're pretty well I, I work with them i have a record label so i release all their music still okay, so okay. they are to... great friends of mine you have to send me some of your products because I've got this YouTube Absolutely. channel. I'll check out some of the yeah. stuff. So, sure. look, so yeah. talking about Narnia then, the first album released in 1996 on Nuclear Blast, or 98, sorry, Nuclear Blast. Um, what was your, right. what was your, um, what did you think of getting signed to Nuclear Blast back in the day, Christian? How did you feel? It was, it was amazing because uh, uh, if I tell the story, it's really, it was a, we, we did that album in 96 and uh, it was during the, the grunge era and uh, in that time melodic metal was not popular at all so uh, it was really hard to find mus musicians who want to do a style like Rainbow and, and Europe and was that we did the album and we got we got a fantastic deal in Japan and the A&R at Nuclear Blast uh, bought the Japanese um, copy of it and bring it to the Marcus Steiger. Uh, actually, Eddie Freiberger was the a and at that time. And Marcus Steiger, the owner, uh, uh, he said, you have to check it out, check this band, band out. And But I said, no, no, we, we have just signed Hammerfall. It's enough with melodic bands. We are harder and tougher style. So what happened was that what I've heard, he got our disc by a mistake went to his car in his Porsche, 
play, put the CD, and it was our CD. And uh, he was amazed about the song No More Shadows from the Past, called Eddie, what is this? And uh, please sign this band, and the rest is history. We got this fantastic deal with Nuclear Blast, and they were really pushing us, tour with Stradivarius, Children of Bodom, then later on uh, with Dio, and that tour was really huge impact for, for uh, the metal scene during that time. And of course, as I said, one of my vocal heroes is Ronnie S. Dio, so that that we got a fantastic push from the start with the Awakening album. So, uh, yeah, and then Long Live the King, and it went on. With, we did four albums on Nuclear Blast. Then they changed A&R, and they want a different direction. So we left the company uh, after our fourth album and then went to Massacre for some albums. And then uh, when the album went out, since we have been reformed again in 2013, we have released our album on our own, but we still have all the good distribution deals and licenses deals that we had the whole time. So, yeah, that's a short <laughs> version of the whole process of Narnia. <laughs> How do you feel Pardon? about getting compared to like Ingrid Malmsteen a lot and that kind of thing? Does it does it really annoy you? No, no, not at all. And uh, because we did it, and uh, I said it was a, it has been a huge influence on Narnia's music. I, I was totally amazed about Hingway back in 1985, 86, when I heard it. Yeah. And uh, I wanted already by then to form a band like that. But then I realized it uh, in uh, in 96 together with CJ. Um, so uh, I, I always wanted to do a band with these neoclassical elements. And you can't do it without mentioning Hingway. Hingway has a huge imprint. Those four albums or five albums in the 80s are totally mm. amazing and uh, still are. And I love to listen to it. But today, I'm sorry, uh, it's not the best quality these days. He still can play, but I miss the songs and the production. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you. His, his productions suck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, but, but, uh, but, he, but you can't. He, he is a, a very important influence in, in the music uh, for metal. Absolutely. And his yeah. guitar playing. But it's sad that uh, these days the albums are far away from the albums in the beginning of his career. Yeah, I mean, mm. I mean, when I listen, I mean, CJ did uh, he toured with uh, Bob Rock, didn't he? Did some Bob Rock albums. They were pretty. They must have been quite influential on the like, Impelitari. Must have had some inspiration in Nani's music. Fantastic, Impelitari. Mm. I, I, uh, I, both me and Andreas Johansson was totally hooked on, especially Screaming Symphony album back in '96. I remember listening to that album, and in even today, I think it's one of the best uh, metal albums. Thirty-three minutes, total metal. I <laughs> love it. When I listen to it, I'm getting to the metal mode directly. Father, <laughs> forgive them. They do not what they do. It's really great. Fantastic lyrics and fantastic <laughs> vocal. Rob Rock, I love him. So, do you think you guys will ever go any any heavier than what you already are? are you gonna are you gonna keep to the neoclassical style? Do you think that you're gonna get some more detuned guitar sounds? Or I think anyway, you see the big process and the progress we have shown us Narnia through through the years. And if you see this album, crossing forward this melodic hard metal and hard rock. Uh, with those elements, and uh, I think that that is what we we will continue uh, try to follow the new album Ghost Town. I think it's a very good summary how the band has mm. progressed, and that we always try to progress as a band in our production, in songwriting, in the way we express my vocals and CJ's guitar playing, Jonathan's bass playing, drums, everything, and I see the compo compo compositions and uh, yeah, the whole package. I'm very pleased. Uh, what we are delivering these days. So how, how was it? How was it to have Andreas back in the band, Johansson? It must be great with it being a former Ingve and Hammerfall. Oh, I think maybe you have mixed uh, up uh, because our Andreas Johansson has been in the band since the beginning. Right. It's yeah. A complete, That's uh, right. Uh, yeah. But so it, some, sometimes it's Anders Johansson, but Anders actually guested with Narnia one show when Andreas couldn't play. So we. That, that was amazing to have uh, Andreas on board, uh, Anders on board. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, you guys were on massacre records. What actually happened with massacre records? Why did you leave? As I said, we want to have full control over our material, and uh, we, both me and Jonathan, we run record labels. We know, we know the business. We have good uh, distribution channels. So we decided that from uh, uh, from the from the album that we released in two thousand sixteen. We continue to do it ourselves, and we 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 hire the service that we wanted, and uh, and also that we want to have full control uh, over the band. Yeah, Johanna, you actually joined the band for the album Narnia, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, well, I joined just uh, after they made the album. I, I met uh, uh, Andreas Passmark, the former bass player, when they took the photo for the for the CD uh, vinyl cover. And then we went into another room, and then we took photos with me. So we had both. <laughs> so, so he played on the album, and That's... then I made the videos and started to play with the band. Okay, how did just you feel... before it was released? How did you feel about joining the band? What was your What was your reaction when the, you got the job? Well, I was very surprised actually because uh, I know I knew Christian a bit uh, from before. <laughs> Uh, and I really looked up to Narnia and uh, at that time I was a guitarist and I just had finished playing with safe mode so I was without band I, and I've been playing in band since 1986 so it was a, a strange situation for me with not having a band and then I got a text from Christian who said hey you play some bass right I was like yeah yeah a bit why we're looking for a bass player for Narnia. And I was like, ooh, I wish I could make it, but, but I, I don't think I'm the guy, but I was. So, so that's is great. It, it, for you to be in a Christian band, you have to have Christian beliefs, or can anybody join the band? Because I know Straper are real particular about their beliefs. And do you guys mm -hmm. have the same sort of ideas, ideological uh, ideas? Yeah, we are all Christians, all of us. Um, right. So I don't think that. Uh, and then we, you know, we agree on on the most uh, things, but not everything. But I think we we are uh, joined in our love for music and in our common faith. So if you had yeah, to, that, if you had to, correct. Yeah, because the band is it's built with, with, to be honest, we are straightforward a Christian band. We're not denying yeah. it, and uh, we have a vision and a mission to to show a heavenly hope and. We all in the band believe in that, so I think it will be a very, yeah, maybe a little bit tricky if you don't uh, uh, are in the same same kind of view uh, that what what you want with this band. Uh, so mm. for us, it's much more. Uh, we have a ministry to really to give something more than just music. We want to give a message. We want to give something, give a hope in this time, and we see it especially now more than ever uh, a big big need. Because I see the, uh, uh, the unhealthy uh, scene. I meet so many people. I work as a, as a coach helping people. I see it as we, we have something that we really think. We want people to get in a better mood of listening to Narnia music. Okay, then. So um, out of all the previous albums that you guys have done, do you have a, pre do you have a favorite album? Do you have your previous ones? Uh, My think, favorite. Uh, it's it's easy for me. It's uh, the last album from Darkness to Light. Okay, is there a reason? Yeah. Uh, I was more involved in that one, and then I think the songs have grown uh, a lot on me. So uh, I think that's why. Uh, and before that, I was as any fan liked Long Live the King the most. Right. Okay. Christian. That's cool. <laughs> so, Christy, what about you? What's your favorite yeah. album? Yeah, I think uh, I think key key albums for me is like, of course, o Awakening and Long Live the King. Those albums have a very important part for me. Uh, have always been, and then Enter the Gate and also the previous one from Darkness to Light. I think that uh, with Enter the Gate, it felt that we reached the next level that we wanted as a band, and. Uh, I'm very, I'm very happy for that album. Yeah. Okay then. So great. Let's talk about the new album then, Ghost Town. Who came up with the title? Well, it was actually me and CJ talked about recording a video, uh, and then we talked about these uh, lighthouses, and he talked about a place where you can find a lighthouse in the desert, in the 
in the United States. And it was near to a ghost town. And then I was like, that's a great title. So we made that song. Okay, interesting. So did you have yeah. any other titles yeah. for the album? Uh, no, I, we, we had another title for this album, uh, and it was Rebel. And then we changed name to Ghost Town. Why, why was it going to be called a rebel? What was the reason for changing? Ah, uh, we thought the. Uh, I think the the artwork looked better to be called the Ghost Town, and it felt like a uh, rebel is much more, you know, like this. Do you and think, I think that, Ghost Town was more? Do you think the next uh, album might be called Rebel? <laughs> maybe. What do you think, Christian? Uh, yeah. I, I... I was the one who, who, who mentioned Rebel. I think both, yeah. I love both both titles. And uh, uh, when I think if we see now, I think Ghost Town is amazing uh, title for it, and also and and uh, the cover artwork, Janis Stefanovic of Divine Fire have done a tremendous artwork for for the new Narnia album. So yeah, mm. we're very happy that Ghost Town it's a good title. Right then, so could you just tell me how long it t took to record this album? Where was it recorded? Oh. I think uh, CJ started with demos already, what do you think, two years ago? Uh, yeah, Is that... three years ago. I think two years ago, yeah. Uh, not, that, not that, so that was the first after. time we heard it. Mm. Yeah, so uh, that has, it has been a process where me, CJ and uh, Jonathan have worked out with vocal lines and lyrics and but CJ have come up with most of the music. Uh, I had uh, some ideas musically uh, for the song Alive, for example, but otherwise it's, it's CJ who is uh, mainly representative for the music. I don't know, did, mm. did you re write some music, uh, Jonathan? For Just this? melodies and uh, lyrics. Just for, yeah. Okay then, so how long, So, are you happy with the way the, the album was produced, how it came out? For those people that don't know, who produced the album? It's CJ Greenmark, who produced the album, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, but then it, of course, we, we are a team. Uh, we were close with Victor Stenkist, our mixer guy, and also then with uh, Thomas Black Johansson, who has mastered and also have very good experience in... Uh, in uh, in producing albums, so uh, uh, it's it's a very good team behind mm. the, the result. Yeah. So, did this album feature any guests? Yes, we have yes. Eric Clayton from uh, Savior Machine. Oh yeah, did I remember. Yeah, band? I know that. Yeah, I know that band. They're kind of gothic, very gothic. Mm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm. That's right. We have worked before. We did. Uh, he was guesting on the, the, the Great Fall album 20 years ago, so it was a good time to, and we are good friends, and we love his deep voice perfectly to uh, to uh, have the speech for the Lord's Prayer. So we thought it was mm. it's a great, great mm. um, choice to, to use his voice. I know he's been involved with uh, Ari on the uh, progressive band from Holland, I believe. Yeah, oh. that's right, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He's also friends with a yeah. mutual friend of mine, Devin Graves from Psychotic Walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so I so say you're happy with the way the album's turned out. I mean, what label are you signed with now, for those people that don't know? Yeah, actually, the album is out on Narnia songs, but it's it's our, al our own label. Then we have different uh, partners we were with, and most of the stuff is distribution, through sound pollution in Sweden. They are very good in hard rock and metal. And uh, then we had uh, a partner in Brazil. We have a partner in, in, in Mexico. We have a partner in uh, in uh, Japan. Japan. So, we, yeah. And we, we, we worked uh, with, with good, bigger distribution channels uh, and very close with sound pollution. So uh, they are, so it, it's our own label, but uh, we work with, a good different partners, so we got it distributed good, both uh, in the digital world and in the physical world. So it's yeah. some pollution based in Gothenburg or Stockholm, because I've been to a record Stockholm, store there. Stockholm. Yeah, I've been yeah. to the rec I've been to the record Stockholm. store. That's... I've been to the record. Yeah, store. okay. In the old town. Yeah, yeah. Drum tech for Anvil. 
I do the drum teching for ah, Anvil. Okay. And I was out there with Anvil okay. last year, so we uh, managed to have a look in the store. So it's a quite interesting shop. So, is, yeah. so those so those guys are the co- the guys that look after you, the people that have the store. Yeah, it's cool. Do you, you mean the, the band Anvil that they did that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm the Rob, yeah. Rob Reiner's drum tech. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, cool. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan since uh, uh, since many years ago, and it's, oh. it was wonderful. And I stopped listening to them again after this movie. Yeah, yeah. So because it's for us, it's like we haven't been playing in England since uh, I think since uh, year 2000. So a long, long time ago, we did a show in England with Narnia. So we we hope to do more UK dates. I yeah, I'm a very big fan of uh, uh, of UK bands, especially now Captain Space and that that kind of stuff. Old older stuff. I really love that you have amazing bands in UK. I mean, if I'm correct, Christian, did you play a Christian festival in the UK? Was that the the date you did? Yeah, we, we did. We did a Green Belt Festival. Yeah, I in, remember uh, that. Yeah, yeah, in 2000. Yeah, that's right. That's so, the only one we have played it played in in, in England. So, but so we you... love to play. Uh, we, we would love to find a good promoter in uh, in England to, and uh, they can deal direct with me. I'm the one who is handling the management and setting the gigs for, for the band. Has the album been receiving good reviews so far since it's been released? Yeah. Really good. Really good. Uh, Fantastic we, reviews. We, I think, uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, I just uh, received another bunch of CDs today because the first uh, bun- uh, first uh, pressing was uh, sold out just before the release date. So we had to order new. Uh, and that was a good yeah. thing in these times. Yeah. So you cool. see, I, I, I have just been to Jonathan's place um, mm-hmm. just to get CDs and LPs because I, I even have my own copies until today. So... Uh, uh, yeah, it's amazing to see, and we also uh, charted at number twelve in the sales in Sweden. So we, it's mm. it's amazing. Narnia is going really really well, and we still have a lot of fans really buying the LPs and CDs for us. So uh, yeah, mm. uh, we we are very lucky to to have that following, and uh, <clears throat> I'm proud to say we are one of the best bands in this style doing this thing. So come on, young kids, show me to play hard, the real stuff, the real hard rock and metal in a good way. Well, I, well, I, well, <laughs> well, I actually reviewed your album. I'll give it four out of five. I don't know if you've seen the review. If Ooh. not, I can, I can send it no, to I you. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, welcome. You're welcome. So do you think you guys will be doing a live DVD again? Because you've only released one DVD. Do you think that's going to be something yeah. you're going to do for this album? Yeah, the thing is that we, we were actually planning, we, we didn't, I don't know if you have listened, we did a live album in Brazil yeah. in 2018, Yeah, and that mm-hmm. was planned to be a, a DVD as well, but uh, mm-hmm. the film crew screw up uh, the film files, so it, mm-hmm. but we, you know, have all the audio files, so we never know, you never know, but I, I know that many fans want to have a, a, a new live concert with Narnia, with the new material mixed with the old one. So you never know uh, what's happening in the future. Mm. But maybe we will record some stuff. During, we will do a tour right now with uh, Rob Rock in, in uh, Latin and South America in September, October. So maybe we will film some of those shows. We will see. Well, that's going to be interesting. Mm. Does that mean that CJ is going to be playing guitar for Narnia and Rob Rock? Yeah, we all are. Yeah, it will be a hybrid concert. Very cool stuff that we hopefully can bring to other territories as well. So mm. it will be a mix. Uh, me doing some songs, then Rob doing some songs, then me again, and then we do some things together. It will be a really, really cool cool show together where we do it, mm. Narnia and Rob Rock stuff. That's going to be interesting. Impeditary as well. I well, yeah, so. that, needs to get, that needs to get videoed, definitely. Yeah. So I think that uh, that could be a, a really cool thing because uh, uh, I think the fans who, who are loving Rob's career and our career, that will be totally devoted. So I really, really hope that we can bring this this package to UK. So all your promoters in UK, get in touch with us and we will come. Right then. Mm-hmm. So, so who would you like to play with um, if you had the chance to tour on your own? in Europe, who, who would you have as a support act, do you think? 
I think uh, for us, we of course the, there are many bands that we we love, but uh, uh, I see if if we as a band got the chance, for example, to open up for Iron Maiden and those bigger bands, that would be great for us. So we are still in, in that role. Uh, it's hard to do a headlining tour, but I think uh, mm. like with Rob Rock and and Narnia, we're doing. Bigger clubs and venues, like between 500 and 1,000 people in South America. But uh, of course, we will do more festivals and stuff like that. So, but the tour with bands, yeah. For me, as I said, I mentioned uh, Iron Maiden. It would be great to open up for uh, a style that fits uh, our style, but not exactly the same. But open up for Dream Theater and those bigger bands in in the hard rock or progressive metal feed. I think I think a, a good band would for you to tell would be TNT from Norway. Kind of similar. Mm. Yeah, that would yeah. be great to open up on TNT. That would be great. They, I know that mm. they're doing a reunion tour uh, this year. I think so. Right, then I'd like to thank both you guys for doing this interview. Do you have anything to say to the people mm. watching this on YouTube? Thank you so much for your incredible support during the, uh, through all the years and we are so happy to do in Narnia and uh, we hope to come to UK very soon again it's been too long time and uh, take <laughs> care and God bless you all we rock and the lion roars again <laughs> okay Johan yourself my friend do you have anything to say <laughs> well I can just uh, say the thing uh, same thing that uh, Christian said uh, yeah and please listen to our new album I think uh, Ghost Town is actually the best thing we have done so far and I think it um, it contains you know um, parts from all the album until now but in a modern way so I think uh, uh, yeah try to listen to it and I think you will like it and we would like to come to UK soon absolutely absolutely and I will also I will also add uh, fantastic Jonathan please buy our CDs and albums physically that help us the band to continue it's very important please support your band that you love in metal please support Narnia take care God bless metal is the way so uh, mm -hmm. have a nice day both of you and uh, God bless and I'll you speak too. to you all soon please and I will also send us some more stuff because me and uh, Jonathan working Jonathan has an amazing band called Starman that will have a new album out called out soon and also uh, I'm working for a, an artist called Kai Posar that have just done two tremendous versions of uh, Don't Talk to Strangers with Dio and also Lonely is the Word with Black Sabbath that will be out uh, April 21. So I will bring you the stuff so you can have them in your show as well. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you so much. Stay metal. You too. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.